Archibus Cloud. Um, my name is Peter Costanzo, um, Director of Facilities Management here at Imagine It, and I've been with, working with Archibus now going back. I hit my 15 year anniversary this month. Um, presenting with me is Greg Aleveris, um, VP of Commercial Sales at, at Archibus Inc. Um, and our goal today was um, to give you an idea of where Archibus is coming with their cloud product, kind of talk about the different components um, that are involved in it, uh, talk about some feature sets, and also leave you with some questions. Um, and as we look at um, cloud, um, there are a lot of benefits. Um, and Archibus Cloud uh, came out of earlier this year, uh, Archibus, or it was actually late last year, was acquired by a venture cap firm. Um, um, Bruce Forbes had passed away, and um, not, not only did they purchase Archibus, but they purchased CeraView. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with CeraView, CeraView has a very elegant, very simple space management solution. Well, it's actually not that simple. Um, which is uh, very uh, well positioned for organizations that are looking to maximize their space. And taking the power of Archibus, and it's, um, uh, you know, it's been around since the 80s uh, with the, the power that's behind Archibus and the capabilities that came with CeraView from kind of a point solution space, we kind of merge the best of both worlds you'll see as we start to talk about Archibus Cloud. Um, but one of the things as we talk about it, we've seen all sorts of different acronyms in the FM space for the last few years. So if you know you're an Archibus person, you've seen CAFM and TIFM and CMMS and IWMS, um, but things continue to move forward. Um, so to give you a little overview of cloud, um, most of the people that are registered for the webinar are familiar with Archibus. So Archibus is um, one of the best of breed IWMS products in the marketplace. And it has uh, incredible depth and breadth, and it is used by a lot of organizations. One of the drawbacks to having tremendous depth and breadth is things get complicated and systems get complicated over time. And the concept as we look forward was, hey, how do we take the power that is in Archibus and simplify it to a level where it can be used by more people, it can be used more rapidly, um, and um, at the same time, it would kind of give you a path moving forward versus, you know, uh, kind of like a point solution. In the marketplace now, you see a lot of things coming out in the cloud. Also, as we think about it from a facilities perspective, the thought of having an IWMS that can not only track our people, our assets, our work orders, but start to give us all sorts of metrics are wonderful. But as the graphic on the bottom right points out, often when I go into uh, see facility managers, I still see people marking up floor plans with a pencil. Um, I laugh, you know, that uh, again, um, not all of you are not only managing your facility, but cleaning your bathrooms, but it, it kind of points to the fact that there are all sorts of things that you're focused on running your everyday business. And I worked with a lot of organizations over the years that are looking for something that will help them maintain what they want, and they love the concept of Archibus. They just don't have the time. Um, and the mug on the left I love as well, um, because uh, the other thing I joke, um, facility managers, um, we're kind of like um, not very appreciated unless, you know, there's a problem with the facility, you're kind of an afterthought. So the thought um, within Archibus Cloud is, Archibus Cloud is based off um, Archibus. Um, so Greg, if you could just hit the first forward. Um, so the core of the system is based off the Archibus data structure. Um, so, um, and on top of that database structure, we took out, um, what we thought were the essential processes um, in a review, talking to the people at CeraView who were very good at putting together um, very dedicated platforms. And in those essential processes, as we look at things, what do we need to do? We need to manage our space, we needed to manage some assets within that space, and we need to manage some requests in that space. So Archibus Cloud kind of has two levels. Uh, it's based off Archibus, but level one is foundations. And then they've got modules that sit on top. So right now there is a space module 
which would give a little more functionality than is in the foundations. Um, so, for instance, uh, it would have a, a full move management module. There is a full asset management module where in foundations you'll track assets at a basic level, um, but in the asset module you start to look at the full life cycle. Um, again, in foundations there's a very basic work order uh, way to interface with the system and you um, can um, move into the maintenance and operations module which gives you the full functionality. Um, the other two things that are part of Archibus Cloud at this point is um, room reservations and is set up as its own um, component in that where we're seeing more and more shared space and things like that. So it's a little more complicated than traditional space and move. And then on top of this infrastructure we plugged in, Fairview has um, two um, stacks and we're not going to cover them today, but they've got uh, two very specialized programs to help organizations that are looking to minimize their footprint. Um, and as you look at it, where I want to go from this slide is, once the takeaway is, the core of the system's Archibus and you've got Archibus on the bottom. We've taken some of the table structures, actually the core table structure, to put together Archibus Foundations. And Foundations is a core piece of Archibus Cloud. So if you buy Archibus Cloud, you're going to start on foundations, and then you've got modules that you can add on top of that. As we look moving forward, um, there are several things that we go here. Um, if you've got 50,000 square feet, you can use Archibus Cloud. If you've got a million square feet, you can use Archibus Cloud. So it's scalable from a square footage or footprint type of thing. The second thing is it's expandable. So foundations has some basic requests um, that you may or may not, uh, you may need something more so you can move up to the maintenance and operations thing. Um, the other thing, it can grow with you as you move forward. Um, so Archibus can support multiple environments. So you can purchase Archibus Cloud today. You can migrate to different levels of functionality within Archibus Cloud. And if you find that you want the full functionality of an IWMS and you want to move up to the enterprise product, there's an upgrade path to do so. Um, the other thing as we look at this, Archibus Cloud gives us some other things like basic things that are expected in the SaaS. So it's off the shelf. Literally, you're having a rapid time to value. Um, in Archibus, we worked very hard to get people up in a matter of weeks to months. In Cloud, you can get up in a matter of days. Um, it's got a lower, lower total cost of ownership because everything's handled. So you don't need to worry about um, software and security and all those things. And then the other thing that I think is very um, powerful that came with this, we'll talk a little bit about this. Um, in the Archibus Cloud Platform, there's a very simple interface for end users. So part of the goal was to make it easier for users that aren't power users to get requests to you and request information. From an infrastructure standpoint, and I know very little of this because I am not a cloud expert, but Archibus is hosted by Amazon Web Services. Uh, they have data centers set up in five different regions. Um, so I know primarily in this call, you know, we've got people from Canada and the U.S., but they've got data centers in, every, in other locations. It's got everything you'd expect from a SaaS platform. You've got a 24-7 support. Um, there are all sorts of information security requirements that are constantly coming out. You know, so the biggest one right now is ISO 27001 and GDPR, um, but we've got a dedicated team to watch those and make sure that we're up with them. And then the other thing that you'd expect from a cloud-based application that you've got 99% uptime, um, you know, with some type of financial penalty um, if you can't use the program. So. What I wanted to do now was talk a little bit about the different components that are in Archibus Cloud. Um, so the first one is I mentioned that there's a self-service workplace. Um, and um, so here's an example of a self-service workplace where someone would log in um, and it's browser-based so you can do this on a, a PDA or sorry, phone, that's an old, uh, old term, <laughs> uh, phone or at your desk. Um, you can do things like book a room um, so if Greg moves along on the slide deck there, you can see there's a request for that. 
There's also a way to create other requests. So, you know, if the power's out or, you know, you have a temperature request or a hot cold, um, the platform has the ability to work in a kiosk out of the box. So if you had a room, you know, at your facility, you wanted people to be able to come in, you know, and say, hey, where does Peter Costanzo sit? Uh, which is kind of funny because I work out of my house, so it's kind of easy to find me. Um, but if, when you go into a facility, you could search for someone or, or look for different things. And then the other thing, which I don't have a shot for, it has the ability to um, also scan QR codes, um, which is becoming more and more common, particularly in the area of work orders where you'll um, scan an asset and we'll pull up all the information on that. The base of the program that I discussed before is foundations. And I'll go back to, um, in the old world, we used to call this CAPM, um, which is a term that uh, I've been here 15 years, it by far predates me. Um, but the essential processes, right? And I use this very technical term to explain this often, which is, where's my stuff? Um, but looking at your space, um, looking at your assets and looking at your requests. So here's an example of the uh, foundations manager where you can look at your different buildings at a high level see some basic information in terms of space and different um, um, workplace services or requests that you have. Within this, um, you're also gonna have the support of that workplace self-service that I talked about on the other slide. And you can do basic things like look at a floor plan, and Greg, if you could just forward along the slide, you know, and then through an end user could, you know, go in and request things. So I've got an example here just to kind of show you the functionality, Greg, if you click again of, you know, looking at uh, a request. So the goal with foundations is um, keep it simple, stupid. Uh, and I like using that term sometimes. Some people are offended. I always say I like keep it simple, stupid because I can actually explain it. Um, but it's the basic levels of space and assets and work orders. And if you look at any core high-end IWMS implementation, you're going to see that Archibus is based on those basic elements of where's my space and where are my assets within those spaces. And then uh, also along that, of course, we've got the link with AutoCAD and Revit that we've had traditionally where Archibus does that directly. So. On top of foundations, then, we kind of talked about those different modules that sit on top. So the first is the space management module. So instead of just basic, hey, who sits where's, we can look at teams and neighborhoods. You can do chargebacks. You can do allocations. You can do detailed metrics. Um, and it, as built into this is the Archibus Move Management Platform, um, which has been used and heavily deployed for years and you can pull all sorts of information out and do metrics. So it's a full functioning um, space management program um, within, within Archibus. The second module is uh, asset management. And as we talk about assets, um, I pulled in a couple different screenshots also here to point out some other things. Um, a lot of facilities aren't concerned with managing just a building. They're on a campus, or you may have a collection of buildings. So part of what's built into this also is the integration with maps so we can look at, you know, a building level of stuff. But I also wanted to show here that we could look at it from, from an asset level. Um, Archibus Asset also supports 3D and BIM. So um, as we start to look, there are more data sets um, and more. Uh, constantly coming in facilities management. And this application will support um, an asset from cradle to grave. So kind of, um, it, the Archibus Cloud is similar to, to, to just an EAM where you're looking at the complete life cycle of an asset. The next component that we're gonna talk about is building operations, which is Archibus's term for work order. So they've got a complete work order management system and um, for those of you who are familiar with Archibus, you'll see, I should have mentioned this earlier, this is the buildings console, which is the same thing that ships in Archibus 24, um, which is the current version, and this is available in the cloud. Um, so you've got the ability to do work, we've got a mobile maintenance app, um, there's the ability to do all sorts of scheduling and all sorts of wizards, but within this, you've got a full functioning work order management system. 
And then the last module that we're going to discuss today is reservations. So we all know that um, meeting rooms are getting harder to find. They're also perpetually growing smaller, uh, and they're also perpetually hoarded. Um, but through the end user interface, people can request rooms and then from a facilities management level, you can manage all of these requests and there's integration with Outlook. Um, and then the other thing that um, this integrates with as well to kind of do full circle is there are more devices in the world. Not only does this support mobile devices and a desktop, but Greg, if you click along, we can also integrate with, you know, your conference room scheduling software if you've got, you know, plates outside your, your room saying what's happening. And that is an introduction of Archibus Cloud. And I'm going to hand things over to Greg now, who's going to talk more about some of the details um, of the different components. Thank you, Peter. And thank you, everybody, for being here. I'm going to spend a short amount of time kind of just giving you a quick showcase of some of the uh, capabilities that you would find at the foundations level of the software. As we'll tell you at the end of this session, this is one of many webcasts that we're going to be planning over the coming weeks and months. Uh, but this would be a good introduction to what we're doing. And I thought where we would start was the employee experience of working with the facilities group, because oftentimes the way we communicate with people is, is exceeded the you know, person to person contact and email. Everybody is electronic nowadays. Everybody is walking around with a device in their hands and wants immediate access to, you know, submit tickets. So one of the things that we wanted to do was is provide a way for people to search for information uh, that they would have. So for instance, if I wanted to find somebody as Peter kind of alluded to, let's say I was gonna find Elizabeth Frost, we hate them, see what floor plan they're on and identify that space so that we can go look for them. If I'm going to a meeting in another building and I wanna find a specific conference room or auditorium, again, use the system to enable me to very quickly access information, get to the floor plan and show me where the location of that space in question can be found on the floor plan. So these are oftentimes questions that people ask I can't tell you how many times I run into people that are um, providing PDFs and whatnot of their floor plans. And nowadays with the technology, with the mobile devices, with their desktop computers and kiosks, all of this can be readily accessible to the folk are looking for information. The other key thing that I think people are looking for is how do I request services from the system? And so, for instance, let's say I'm looking to arrange a meeting and I want to schedule it for a specific date. And in that date, I want to set a time. So I'm looking to establish a two hour uh, meeting. Sorry, I just uh, backtracked on that one. Didn't mean to do that. Wrong button. So now I have that time frame uh, set for you know the two hour window. Uh, I want to pick the date where I'm going to look for that meeting. And it again, it's on the 8th. And I'm going to set that meeting to have eight people in it. And I can search for the space. Oh, sorry. sorry, I keep meaning to pause and I end up scooting back to the beginning there. Sorry. We'll try that one. I'm just not going to pause the, the video anymore. All right, so I'll just talk very fast. So what I was going to do here is we've set that to our window. We've set the date for the 8th, as I was saying. And one of the things we you know, want to do is find a space. So for starters, I you know, want to find a room for eight, but hey, wait a second, I need a, a room with a large monitor that further filters my options. And it so happens I am looking to use that room. So I pick that room. And again, I can do this on my device and whatnot. I schedule the meeting and I want to put a name to it. And lucky for you folks, you're walking, watching one of many Archibus presentations to come. So we're going to go ahead and schedule that session. We could invite people if we wanted, but in the meantime, we'll just go ahead and set it up. That meeting gets booked and it gets put on the calendar and it gets added to my list of meetings that I have in my home uh, for activities. 
the other thing we want to be able to do is enable people to submit tickets uh, for service. So there is a quick and easy way, either again on their mobile device or laptop where they can go find a location. They would have the ability to grab a photo. No, I'm using my laptop. So guess what? We're going to use me as as the object and say use the image. And then in this case, I don't want to scare everybody. So we'll take that picture out. We'll go ahead and submit the ticket and it creates the work order ticket and it ends up in my queue. And again, it ends up in my home page, letting me know what the status of the work is and where I can go find it. And a little while, you know, we'll take a look at how that work gets managed from the facility management side. But what you see here is some of the employee experience of working with the facilities group to input and update and about, uh, you know, their needs and, and their ability to use the space that they're working in. And we now have a better way and an easier way for people to manage that. On the flip side of that in foundations, as Peter said, we're doing some basic space and work ticket and asset, you know, management. I'm going to cover two of those items in the next couple videos here. Uh, the first thing I want to is getting into the depth of some of the space. Um, so what we're going to do is go ahead and launch and we'll use that space console. And this is a good example of leverage technology that already exists within the Archibus platform. And so for those people who are managing portfolios, we, you know, we find what building we want to look at. We see what floor plans we have connected to the database. We load those floor plans and we do the basic things that everybody wants to do. We want to be able to understand how space is allocated. We want to understand how space is classified, what's occupiable, what's not occupiable. We, you know, we want to use the database to give us all of that relevant information. We want to use the system to manage change. And there's a lot of different ways, and I'll give you one quick example here where I'm going to scroll down to workstations and I'm going to make some changes in the database and I'm going to reassign uh, from open workstation to just general workstation three locations. And those are changes that I can make on the fly in the system, helping me maintain a good current accurate inventory of what I'm doing. Now, in addition to managing all of that, the other aspect of what we get to do is manage the occupancy of the floor plan and this helps us identify what spaces we have to assign people and who those people are assigned to the places that they work. And so what we'll do is we'll do a quick zoom in here and I'm going to do a simple move. One of the things that many of you are uh, responsible for all and that is the ability to reassign people from one location to another, not going through a fancy move process, but simply using the software to help you keep everything current. This was a simple move, you know, move to person next door. I could move person from one floor to another. I can move persons from one from one building to another. And, and the whole goal here is to help me maintain the inventory of information because that forms the foundation of all the work that we need to do to plan and achieve the goals of our organizations. Finally, I want to talk to you a little bit about service capability. And in this case, oh, sorry, again, need to start the right uh, video. So I'm going to start this video in, in the same way that I did before. We'll start by generating a request. So I want you to see the full cycle of work. We'll treat it as a plumbing uh, issue. And so there is a leak that's discovered in uh, one of the restrooms. We identify the space. And again, if we're using a QR code or whatever, we could use the door you know, to locate it. Um, in this case, I'm just typing it in. Like I said before, we would be able to take a picture of the sink here. We're just gonna give some general instruction. A work ticket has been generated for us to take a look at. And you can see in my queue, I now have reported that ticket. And as the ticket evolves through the system, I'll be able to keep track of what's going on. So from a simplistic point of view, one of the things we want to do is help us keep track of all these tasks. And so what I want to be able to do is identify uh, the work I just generated, which in this case is a plumbing. 
I can use the system to locate it. Uh, it will actually go in and highlight it on the floor plan if I need to. And I can also use the system to approve the work, to assign it, to move it forward. And the whole goal is to make sure that I'm not just responding to tickets, but I can actually manage the process. Once I've managed the work and completed it, and I'm, I'm expediting my way through this, we can go in and provide a little bit more detail. But for this, we just want to mark it from a task completion point of view, give a quick note on update, and change its status so that it is now listed as completed in our list. And what I'm going to do from an employee point of view is refresh my screen. Um, and the process is I just need to hit home and I'll go, you know, take a look at that list. So show all of the work. And you'll notice the number 11936 has now been updated status as being completed. So we can use the system to help keep people, keep, keep people current. We can also, of course, send out email notifications, but there is a one-stop shop that employees can use to keep an eye on their interactions with the facilities department. There's a few other things that we can do with the foundations program, and there are by no means all of that you can do, but that just gives you kind of a start of where people are. And as we say, one of the things that we'll do is talk about upcoming activities. So Peter, I'm going to flip it back over to you to kind of wrap up this and then open it up for questions. Okay. So um, to kind of uh, go back, so um, I think, Greg, if you could just hit the slide one more time so it kind of shows the graphic again because I'm watching the questions on the board and I think that would be helpful. Um, so, so as we go today, all we covered was Archibus Foundations. Um, so you saw a lot of functionality in terms of what you can do. Um, and as we talk, um, Archibus um, has their foundation product, which is based on the core product. So some of the uh, views, Greg, specifically looked into what we would call the consoles inside of Archibus and the enterprise platform um, are being used in the mobile, uh, not the mobile, the, the SaaS platform. And I can't make any comments um, for uh, Archibus as a software manufacturer, um, but one could uh, believe that the goal would be to expand this. Um, and I'm pushing Greg pretty hard right now, specifically, uh, we're doing a lot of work in compliance. Um, so as Archibus looks at um, the capabilities where they have on the bottom, the goal is to start adding additional functionality over time. Um, and as you look, um, the foundations is the core of the Archibus program. I have Archibus Enterprise on the bottom because it's based off the same database that the Archibus database system is. So as we talk from an expandable position, and this might answer one of the questions, you can start with foundations, um, upgrade to the different modules, and then decide you wanted to move to Archibus Enterprise. And Archibus Enterprise could be hosted in the same place um, that um, um, it is um, uh, up on AWS through Archibus, um, or it could be on, on site at your location. Um, but as we look at it, you've got the foundations project, which I would call, uh, using an old term, a CAFM, or, you know, a basic, you know, low level, where's my space, where are my assets, what type of services do I need to do around that? On top of that, you've got the modules, um, and in we're going to have a monthly webinar the next few months, and we're going to cover um, over the next four months, first space, then assets, then building operations, and then reservations. Um, and then after that, um, also added to this, Archibus I mentioned earlier had merged with Seraview. Seraview has some very powerful capabilities around optimizing the use of space. So Seraview is integrated with this as well, where you can use capabilities of the Seraview platform. So we're going to have a six-part webinar series. Today is foundations and kind of an overview of what's available. Then we'll follow the different modules um, in, um, in order there. And then um, we're going to have a webinar kind of outlining what Seraview is. We hope that this is helpful. Um, 
Lisa, do you want to press pause before we start the questions and answers or? Um, yeah, we can, we can go ahead and move forward with those. Okay, so one of the first questions comes in from Craig and he asks, it sounds like there's a difference between enterprise and cloud there. And can you elaborate on that? So Argabus Enterprise is the pr uh, product that has been shipping today and has been shipping now, oh gosh, Greg, since the 80s. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, so Argabus Enterprise is the uh, standard Archibus IWMS marketplace. Um, the best way to describe cloud is it's a subset of that functionality, um, which um, doesn't uh, you can't um, configure the system. So there's less configuration um, from a configuration standpoint, but there is a more rapid time to market. So within Archibus Cloud, we have streamlined the most common areas of space management in an office setting, for instance. Um, hopefully that answers your question, Craig, or Greg, do you want to take a different crack at that? No, no, I just wanted to add to that. I think the other thing that it gives you is a managed environment where, you know, we collectively take care of the software. So all of the updates and and enhancements to the software are in, you know, are updated by us automatically. And, you know, they don't have to be scheduled like a lot of people have to to do now. So as we make improvements and enhancements, you know, those are applied in the cloud on a regular basis. So that's an important aspect. I think that's different than where a lot of people are doing upgrades every two to three years. Okay, so our next question um, is the AWS server, the government version. Uh, I, I'm not clear on that. Uh, we'll have a follow up answer. I, I think we're very aware of FedRAMP and some of those things, but I don't know to what level we achieve that, so we'll follow up with a with a posted response. Okay. I am doing some Fed Ramp projects, um, so I know I can physically say that I'm part of the people involved in that, and it's something that I would expect to see come out of the product. Um, is there a dummy account available um, where we have the ability to share access, so people can check it out, look at it, kind of feel around? So, Greg, I'll take that one. Go ahead. Yeah, so um, uh, working with you as Imagine It, we definitely can set you up in, in a test account where you can do things. Um, um, I'm very excited about Archibus Cloud. Um, I've been selling um, this system for 15 years. And uh, the first question after we do a demo is, hey, that's wonderful. And by the way, can we see it in our own space? Um, so not only could we uh, create an account that you could see the program, we probably could load up a floor plan or two so you could kind of see it within your world. Um, and the other thing I like about that is um, you get to, uh, for, for a very non-technical term, you, you get to kick the can. You get to kind of try before you buy um, from that capability. So if you contact um, your Imagine It sales rep, or myself and Lisa will be sending out, or Lisa who will be sending out contact information after this, I, I can set that up definitely. Okay, perfect. Also, is room booking bi-directional with Outlook? User create a booking with Outlook and then it's reflected inside of Archibus Cloud. Let me take that one, Peter. Yes, sir. <laughs> It's easy. The answer is yes. So we have set it up so that we integrate with Outlook. Uh, one is that we do have an Outlook plugin. So if your users are familiar with with you know Outlook as a means for scheduling conference rooms, then we set up a plugin that provides access to the list of rooms and the schedule, and they can do everything that they need to do in Outlook. And all of the schedule and list of conference rooms is managed in Archibus. We further enhance that by providing some exchange level integration, which helps really coordinate the schedules and employees and availability of people for meetings as well. So that's another nice feature and that's all part of the cloud deployment. Okay, and um, can this be integrated with ServiceNow? Yes. Oh, can I answer that one? Yeah, go ahead, go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so, um, 
there are a lot in ins and outs um, in, in what's involved, but one of the standard SKUs on the price list is the ServiceNow integration. Um, so not only can it be integrated, it's part of a standard module that can be shipped. Or sorry, not shipped, included in your cloud install. I'm still learning, you know, to talk cloud versus uh, an on-site uh, install. <laughs> Um, is there any opportunity for client level configurations and preferences? Yes, and Greg, why don't you talk a little bit about what can be done? And I, I think we all, you all, when you answer that, you also might want to differentiate, you know, what's available between foundations and as you start to look at the modules, because the more functionality you purchase, the more capabilities you have. But you know the details of that better than I do. Yeah, so I'll give it a first pass. And if, if we don't get, we'll, we'll certainly augment that with some follow up. So yes, it is configurable, um, but the level of customization is much more tightly controlled because obviously as we manage the upgrades from version to version, you know, um, update to update, we want to, have a consistent way of deploying the software. So we have a much tighter process for managing the change that occurs. So there are certain places in the software, like in the consoles, where you can turn certain things on and off, where you can reset you know, certain values and dimensions on your fields, where you can even add a field here and there. A lot of that is still available uh, to be done you know, with the cloud environment, but it is done under a much more tightly controlled and managed process so that we're not interrupting uh, the, you know, the future generations of the software release and disrupting. That's part of what we're trying to do with, with cloud and SaaS is to make sure that we have a, a regularly predicted, you know, upgrade path and a much more tightly managed way of achieving that uh, for folks. And so we'll be working with everybody to better understand how the software operates and help people leverage what we're delivering off the shelf. And two things I just might want to add there. So the first thing is, um, I don't care what software you're looking at today. There are all sorts of cloud and SaaS based options. Um, one of the very powerful things that Arquebus offers you is they aren't a startup. So most of the things that people are going to want to do, this has been thought well out. I've been involved in discussions for over a year about different use cases and different users. The second thing is there is a, a ability for configuration. It is less as the SaaS product and it's less on all SaaS products, but Arquebus will update this quarterly, I believe, Greg? That's generally the plan, yes. So there's a plan to have a quarterly update. So the other thing that we'll be looking at also, you know, as different requests come in, and I'll say this, you know, we're, we're a reseller of Arquebus, we're working with them for years, but um, in Arquebus Enterprise, we can go and do whatever we want to do. When I'm working in the Arquebus Cloud environment, we've got to talk to the Arquebus Cloud team. So the other thing that I anticipate is that as users are asking for different functionality, that you will see a lot of that being built into the program, um, if it's things that other people can use. Okay, well, it looks like that might be the last. Um, oh, I do have another question. The quarterly updates, will that be free of charge for the business partner clients? Yes, that's all included in the cloud SaaS delivery model. So they are automatically applied and they're automatically delivered. And it's all part of the, you know, annual fees that will be incorporated into the, you know, into the SaaS program. Okay, well, does anyone else have any other questions? Um, one more question. Um, are these the only modules in the cloud? At the moment, yes, as of, you know, as of today, these are the first set of modules that have been, you know, transitioned to be available in the Archibus cloud. We are currently working out plans for additional modules and information on that either later this year or early next year as to what other additions we'll be making. And as Pete indicated, he is lobbying very strongly to add 
some level of compliance management to that list. Okay. Are there any other questions from our attendees today? As I did mention, this is recorded um, and Peter mentioned we will be having a monthly series around the Acrobus cloud diving deeper into each of the modules. So stay tuned for invitations that will be going out shortly and have a great rest of your day. Thank you everybody. Now concludes the webinar.